the Holy Father has asked all the local churches, all the dioceses around the world, to have a Sunday that we're celebrating today to open a synod that he will celebrate next year, sometime next year, in a planned together of gathering of the churches and a synod which is going to be one that's going to reflect on the process, the synodality, they're going to call it. And it's just something we want to reflect on today. But above all, to pray for the Holy Spirit in our church here across this diocese, but all the dioceses across the world to begin a preparation of something that will take place in Rome in this not too distant future. But what we speak about today is really the foundations of what the church does all the time and what we will continue to do as have we been doing all along and continue to do going forward but with the very specific aim that the Holy Father has for this special gathering that he has asked together. Two Greek words that are used, this one is the synod, and we'll just talk about that in a minute. The one is synaxis as well. What we're doing today is a synaxis, a Eucharistic synaxis, just a gathering, and we'll just use that, the assembly or gathering together. But what we've said so many times, what we're doing this morning is following the command of Christ to gather together as a church, to gather together as baptized faithful in order to celebrate the first day of the week to mark the day that Jesus rose from the dead, to proclaim our faith, to profess our faith, to give glory to God and to enter into a Eucharist which he has instituted for us in which he allows us to offer ourselves as he offers himself to the Father and then to be nourished with his body and blood and the strength of grace that is there to go out into the world and to be part of a mission of preaching his presence in our lives and his presence in the world through his word. And that's what we do every Sunday. And it's the command that Christ has given to each of us. And that's the assembly that takes place in the local churches, in all of our local parishes. And the primordial, the importance of that is never overlooked. And that's why the Holy Father with a Mass last week in Rome and then seven days later throughout the churches of the world institutes something, a gathering that he will ask together of different churches coming together, which is his synod, but beginning with the gathering that we take place every Sunday as the community of believers gathers together. And what marks this gathering will mark every other gathering. And that's why it's so important to reflect as we have so often of what takes place today and some of the characteristics which we always aim towards, the objects of what we do, which take place on our Sunday morning liturgy. And that is what binds us together. After a brief homily today, then we'll introduce, instead of the creed, the questions to the faithful speaking of their faith, which we do at the Easter vigil in the Easter time, asking the questions, do we reject Satan? Do we believe in the Father and in the Son? and in the Holy Spirit, the baptismal form of our faith. And that sets for us that foundational aspect of whatever takes place. But a belief that the Holy Spirit is at work constantly in the church and constantly in the lives of each one of us. In the present moment of our lives, the very present moment between the past and what the future holds for us, the Holy Spirit is at work impelling us, giving us grace, forming our thoughts, allowing our hearts to be turned towards Christ in conversion and above all in praise and in glory. And it's that reality, that miracle, which is part of our lives, which we neglect so often because of our frailty and because of our distractedness with so many things taking place, that the Holy Spirit is alive in the church in the same way and alive in the lives of the faithful in that present moment of exactly what is taking place. And for us to reflect upon how the Holy Spirit works within us in a mystery we'll never understand, but impelling us to go and visit the poor, impelling us to pray for somebody, impelling us to think of someone and bring them to prayer, impelling us to resist something or to do something, is all the aspects of the miraculous way in which the Holy Spirit works in our lives on that present moment, not just daily, but how many times during the day. For us who are attentive, to realize what is taking place. And there is a listening that takes place which the Holy Father has asked the church to facilitate and to grow in an ability to listen, to 
but listen to the Holy Spirit above all in our lives individually and then together as a gathering to understand how the Holy Spirit speaks to the church as it's been speaking to it for generations from the beginning of time to allow the church and its people and its faithful to live in that present moment which is different from the moment a day ago, a year ago, 10 months, whatever, 10 years ago, and so on. Because the present moment of the reality of our lives is where Christ's grace is at work and especially is so powerful within us. What I wish us to do is to develop that facility within ourselves, already present, but an ability to listen to the Word of God which is preached to us and proclaimed for us at the Mass, and to listen to that Word which is an enormous, enormous task for us in humanity. And this is one place where we see really the, the depths of our weakness as human beings. Because we wish to listen to what we want to hear, we wish to listen to the things that will make us feel better in our pride, but we also have the ability to turn things off and not listen, which we know so easily, and not listen attentively to something that is taking place. Often it calls us to conversion. Often it calls us to joy and thanksgiving in the gifts that the Lord has given to us. These past weeks, I've been visiting some of the parishes, two parishes that have lost pastors who have been around for 18 years. And just the reality of going on to a new situation after having lost a pastor for 18 years, it needed for us just to be able to speak about the fact how important it is for us to be thankful for everything in the past, to live absolutely in the present, and with great hope look forward to the future and the graces that God will constantly bring to us in our lives. And this is a sense of the courage of our Christian lives, knowing of God's providence for everything that takes place, knowing of his guidance for us, and then understanding the importance for us to be purified in our intentions and in our lives and in the sanctity of what we do so that we can become vessels of his grace for ourselves, those with whom we have a relationship in marriage or close friendship, and the community which gathers with us on the first day of the week. And it is here, in this gathering, in this community, that the Holy Spirit will speak most efficaciously. It is here that we hear his voice, in our hearts and in the community together. And nourished with that strength, it really gives us the strength to listen, to listen attentively and reverently to a word that is spoken from eternity. This is not a word that is spoken once and then repeated on some kind of a recorder or some kind of a listening device. This is a word that is spoken from eternity and enters into the world and the hearts of the faithful with a power from the eternal which never ever goes away. And then we start to realize that we're facing and encountering something which is so of grandeur and majesty and mystery which is beyond our comprehension. This is the gift for ourselves of opening the Gospels in the privacy of our room. This is a gift for ourselves of coming to Mass and having the Gospel proclaimed to us. This is the gift of ourselves of hearing it preached to us and also allowing it to reside in our memory and in our hearts so that it comes back in our lives with a repetition of a living Word that is within us and allowing us to listen constantly. So often in our lives, we know because of our weakness, we hear something and we need to hear it again and we need to hear it again and it's the gift of preaching, it's the gift of teaching. Repetition, repetition. But God uses it in a way in which he gives another flavor to it and another aspect and a mystery to it, almost of peeling off aspects of the reality with us. He lists, we listen to it again. Fourteen years later in our lives, we listen to it again and it has a different meaning for us and pushes us to enter more strongly into the mystery of what our lives are as Catholics and as Christians. And as a church, 50 to 55 to 60 years after the great gift of the Council given to us, the church continues to listen to the Holy Spirit and will continue to listen going forward in the future in our lives and in the life of the church itself. This is the gift that the Holy Father has asked us to reflect upon. We'll never be able to accomplish in the short time frame that he has given us to do but he's let us know this is a, one just to begin an appreciation of the process going on within our own lives 
and within the church, especially with a world that is changing so quickly, with lives that are suffering so much because of this change and adjustment that takes place, especially for ourselves after this time of pandemic. For us to be attentive to how the Holy Spirit acts within us. When the community meets on the first day of the week, it meets in communion with Christ and with God and with one another, in peace and in charity with one another. And these become the marks of the gathering of the Synaxes or the Eucharist when we gather together on Sunday. These become the marks of the church when it gathers in a synod or in any other gathering that marks the Holy Spirit's presence in our lives. And always, always calling us and leading us closer communion with Christ so that as this life ends for ourselves and our mortal bodies, we'll be with Christ for eternity.